Okay, welcome back to The Daily Mastermind. My name is George Wright III with your daily dose of inspiration, motivation, and education. I'll tell you what, I am really excited today. We've got a, a, a special guest. I'm going to intro him here in a minute, but the goal here is I want to give you some cutting edge stuff. I want to give you some stuff to really help you take it to the next level. And so let me do a quick introduction for those of you that do not know Shahin Shahin. He's an award-winning entrepreneur, writer, filmmaker. We're going to get into some cool stuff with him because he's currently the founder and CEO of Accelerated Intelligence, which is a, it's a major Amazon FBA uh, seller, millions of dollars in sales. He does mentoring for entrepreneurs on how to crush it with the Amazon platform. But he's also an active YouTuber, if you've seen him there before. Um, you know, he's considered one of the leading minds when it comes to e-commerce and, and Amazon. In fact, the London Observer, I thought it was interesting, the London Observer and, and Newsweek have described uh, Shahin as the Willy Wonka of Generation X and one of the most forward thinkers in business. But for me, what was most impressive about your background is, you know, that during the Iranian Revolution of 78, your family had to escape to survive and you ended up in L.A., and at 15, left home with nothing but the clothes on your back to, and, and ultimately created by 20, a billion dollars in revenue in, uh, you know, in sales with this smart drug you invented, the herbal ecstasy um, deal. And, you know, I, I know that you've said that these childhood experiences and major uh, things in your life have impacted your entrepreneurial journey, but that is, that is his background. And I'm super excited to, to be able to talk to you today. So Shahin, welcome to the show. George, it's my honor. Thank you for having me on. Well, listen, man, I, I think sometimes I'll get, because I've, I've met a lot of thought leaders over the years and celebrities, experts and things, and I get some pretty crazy stories, but your story started out just out there, you know, and, and, and I myself, I got right out of high school at 17, had twins, got married, you know, so I went right into the workforce. So I was a couple of years lagging behind you, but I would love to just start with you kind of elaborating a little bit on your background and how, how that kind of all went down, because obviously there was a big jump from, you know, leaving home with nothing but the clothes on your back at 15 to mm. inventing something that would, would turn into a billion dollars in revenue. I mean, t talk to me about your background and then we can kind of get into some strategies here in a minute. Yeah. So refugees, immigrants, we came from Iran during a time when Iran was in turmoil and we came through Germany to the United States. And my folks were solid middle class, upper middle class in Tehran, Iran. When we moved to the United States, all of a sudden we were poor. My dad worked at pizza, pizza place. He worked at a dry cleaners wow. and they managed to work hard enough for enough years to buy a house, a fixer in an area that was kind of down on its luck at the time. Turns out that area became quickly gentrified during Reaganomics in the 1980s. Wow. trickle down economics, people start moving to Los Angeles. And we're hanging around this neighborhood still very poor. But I'm starting to notice and mind you, I did not speak very much English at all. Oh, I was gonna ask you. Okay. Yeah, I didn't speak very much English. And I'm starting to notice Farsi is my, my mother tongue, I'm starting to look around and see all this wealth. And I remember asking my folks, hey, how do I get to that level of success. I want the Ferrari. I want the beautiful blonde next to me. I want, you know, the big houses and all that stuff. How do I get that? And my parents being immigrants only knew one way. Be a doctor. Go talk to Mr. Tehrani down the sure. street. He's doctor. And I thought, well, okay, let me go check that guy out. And then when I looked at that guy, I was like, that fucker's fat. He's <laughs> old. He's bald. The kids are old, fat and bald. The wife is old, fat and bald everyone's fucking miserable. And like the bank owns his house. He's got no free time. Like if that's like what happens, I'm fucking out. And I packed my bags and I left. Now I had had some success in grade school. Grade school was not without its merits for me. I ran a very lucrative criminal enterprise in grade school where I managed to gather up all the kids that had something wrong with them, all the kids that didn't belong, all the misfits. And I started a little gang where we would walk into the liquor stores and we were just kids. And one of the kids was a little Greek kid. He would slide under the metal detectors. We had metal detectors in those days. Wow. And he would grab all the little bottles of liquor, the cigarettes, the nudie magazines, penthouse, playboy, hustler, whatever we could sell. And we would sell it at school. 
I quickly realized to myself that I was really good at sales. I was really good at marketing. I was really good at making money. I was terrible at being a fucking criminal. I was really bad at crime because we would get caught 110% of the time. I would get caught for stuff I didn't do. And I remember being in detention, which by the way, was very profitable because who's in detention? Of course, all the ones, your clients. (laughs) All your clients are sitting there thinking to myself, man, like this crime thing really should not be for me. There's probably people that are good at crime. I am not one of them. So fast forward, I am now 15. I left home and I'm involved in the electronic music scene. I get involved in the rave scene. Yeah. I'm sleeping in the backseat of an abandoned car. I'm sleeping in abandoned buildings. I learned that you can make friends with brokers and get the lock keys before the buildings are finished building. And you can slide in and sleep in them and then slide out before they catch you in those days. So that was where I would say I would go to the community college where they would have free food sampling during the week. And that's what I would eat. And I found a mentor. I got in the electronic music scene and I realized that the only people making money in that scene in those days uh, were not the DJs. Nobody cared about people who played other people's music. Even though DJs had popularity, they were broke. Wasn't the landowners. Most of those warehouses were broken into or borrowed. And people didn't really drink that much in those days in the rave scene. So it was the drug dealers. I thought, perfect. That's exactly what I want. It's quick. Those guys have money. They got the girls. They got the cars. That's exactly what I need to do. And then I looked back at my life of adolescent crime and thought to myself, think again, dude. You're like, you'll never make it. (laughs) Yeah, You definitely don't want to be in the business of crime. Not you. And then it occurred to me, well, what's the biggest drug right now? It's ecstasy, MDMA, molly, methyl dioxy, methamphetamine. And I thought, well, what if there was a natural way? What if I created a natural version of this? And that's what I did. And I remember uh, finding myself in a club with the first batch that I made basically in uh, the kitchen of a, of a girlfriend that I had to let me sneak in to her house when her dad left and, and cook the stuff up, cook up my prototypes in her kitchen. And I, I was at the club. I had these baggies filled with these goo filled balls. I didn't have the machine to buy the, I didn't have enough money to buy the machine that put them into capsules. And I remember walking into the club, there was this, you know, nowadays, if you have tattoos on your face, you become TikTok famous. Yeah. Back, tattoos are a norm now. They're the norm. Back then in the eighties, if you had tattoos on your face, you'd be clinically insane. You know, people would, people would not allow you in indoors if you had tattoos on your face. So I, I remember the guy, the drug dealer, he, he was the biggest XC dealer at the time. He had the whole grill teeth thing. He had these kind of rough, but good looking girls behind him. He had bodyguards and he had tattoos on his face, down his neck. And I came forward and he said, look, kid, fuck off. I don't have any drugs. You know, the supply and demand. A uh, huge demand for ecstasy. The supply had dried out because of the Reaganomics, the just saying no, all that stuff. Most of it was being made in the UK and Holland, and the supply had stopped coming into the United States. And I said, well, I don't want to buy any drugs. He said, are you a cop? I said, no, no, not a cop. I'm, I'm just a kid. So what the fuck do you want? I said, sell my stuff. And my feet, I could feel them being glued to the ground. I wasn't going to move. And I remember thinking to myself, this is probably one of the stupidest things you've ever done, and you likely are going to get killed. And I remember waiting the two hours it took for when once he finally accepted to sell my stuff that evening, and it was it was very fortuitous. Two people walked up to him. They were trying to give him money. He was throwing it back at them. He finally got pissed, grabbed my entire backpack, and gave him a pack of mine and told me to come back in a couple hours. I was sweating bullets. I was now thinking... What are all the excuses I could use for this guy not to kill me? And in two hours, I came back, sweating bullets, nervous as all hell. He was just looking at me. I I don't think he had very many expressions. So I couldn't tell if he wanted to kill me or if he was happy. And then he just leans over and says, kid, when can you get me more? And it went from one guy to a thousand guys to 10,000 guys. We became, we legitimized a lot of these drug dealers who had this is like 15 to 20 years old, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. 
I was, I, I was, and I, I have a question for you and, and, yeah. but I'm going to, but I, before I ask my question, I'm going to pause. Cause I know that there's, you know, there's a lot of people probably listening to this story with, besides the fact that it's completely entertaining and they're going, okay, George, like what, what, what's the point here? And here's the point. And the reason I want you guys to start listening more is that success leaves clues. Look, I could go on and on about Shaheen, how like you had nothing, you know, you, you hustled, you did whatever you had to do. I mean, we're obviously we're not promoting drugs and things, but that's not the point here. You guys got to listen to the fact that he was determined. He was recognizing certain things. He was persistent. But one of the questions I was going to ask you is what gave you this sense of, you know, from moving to the United States, right? And everything, this constant sense of what looking for success and why that didn't appeal to you being a doctor, but, but why doing this did or being on your own, like what, what were you, when you grew up, were your parents like instilling in you this idea that you wanted to be successful? Or do you think you just, cause I mean, I, I'm not a big believer that people are just born wanting to be successful. It's usually a product of their environment. What is it that really gave you that drive? Do you think? Yeah. So that's two parts. That's a great question, uh, George. So the first part to that question is I came up in the third world where we are not entitled to anything. Nothing is guaranteed. And you have to fight to survive where I came from. So things were a little different and things were different when I grew up. When we came to this country, I didn't speak a lick of English. And I got my ass kicked twice, one for being a little Jewish kid and two for being a little Iranian kid. And it was the worst time to be either of those things. So yeah. grown, grown up in school, I had my ass handed to me daily. I thought that's what happened at school. You would get your ass kicked. That's, that's what you go for. You go to get an ass kicking. And you know, you'd tell the teachers and they'd be like, what did you do? That would, be the, that would be the answer. That's what it was like in the 80s. We didn't have anti-bullying. We didn't have any of that stuff. And I really believe to this day that that built grit. I'm thankful for those experiences yeah. because it built thick skin. It built grit. It built resilience, which it now resilience. I feel, yeah, now I feel is a, a, a really a foundation for who I am. The second part was I started reading early. After I got my ass kicked daily on the, on the playgrounds, I decided I'm going to take to books. And I read Napoleon Hill. I read the early Tony Robbins books, Wayne Dyer. I was deep, deep, deep into personal development. I read Ogmandino. I read yeah. Richard Bach and, and all these great uh, writers, those old timey writers that wrote about success. And I don't know how much of those guys, what they said was bullshit and how much of it was real. And, you know, there's all this controversy around Napoleon Hill and those guys, and that's fine. But it created but your frame of mind for sure. That's right. It created a mindset for me that that was possible. So later in life, as I, as I approached more and more success, I started reaching out to writers. I started reaching out to, to personal development writers, business writers, and making them my friends and started working with them on some of these concepts of success, which I, you know, to this day carry with me. You know, it's, it's great that you say it that way too, because I wanted to point out like I said earlier, um, success leaves clues. And here I, I've noticed, and Gary V talks about it a lot as well, but you know, individuals that have had to immigrate or c come from third world, they, they recognize opportunities that many people are just, you know, so when, you know, not only don't see the opportunity, but they certainly don't take advantage of opportunity right now. And then that other point you made, which I really, really loved is that you early on started this process of personal development, reading, mentors, because you mentioned earlier, you got a mentor, you know, this mentoring and going right for it. And, you know, especially with millennials now, I think one of the reasons success comes sort of seemingly easier for a lot of them is because they don't have the baggage. They have creativity and resilience and, and optimism. And that's the, so not recognizing opportunities and optimism, those are huge, 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 you know, criteria for being successful. So I really love that that's kind of happened with you. And so, so lead me into what, as you kind of transition, obviously you were a young entrepreneur. I was the same way, man. I was like, I was, I was uh, <laughs> slinging, like I would go, you know, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail, but I, I would get stuff. I would sell it at school right out of my duffel bag and from the lemonade stands to the sling it at school to whatever. But there was a point in time where you probably transitioned into kind of where you are now, this entrepreneurial CEO business 
um, you know, entrepreneur sense and, and, and kind of bridge me into what you're doing now. What was there a pivot or did it gradually just go into the realm of Amazon and some of the amazing things you do now? Or was there was there a story or a point in time that transitioned you? Yeah, I'll tell you a great story. So now all these drug dealers became legitimized. They had official businesses, they bought territories, they got distributorships. We're in 32,000 retail stores, franchises. Wow. We're in Urban Outfitters, Warehouse Music. Larry Flint got us through all the sex stores and all the hustler stores. So our product was in 30, 32,000 doors retail. This is wow. pre-internet. I get the news that we broke a billion dollars in revenue. Sam Donaldson wanted, was outside wanting me to be on Nightline. I did that show. It's on YouTube. I was on Montel Williams, two Newsweek covers, LA Times, London Observer, all that stuff. I had an exotic car collection, a collection, Lamborghinis, Ferraris. I got the brand new NSX, one of the best ones I bought at that time. You know, boats, planes, all that stuff, flying, hanging around with celebrities, big parties, all that stuff. And I remember six months before, this happened very fast, I was sleeping in the backseat of an abandoned Lincoln Continental with the pages of Think and Grow Rich taped to the ceiling with as much tape as I could afford with wow. a flashlight reading them every single night until I fell asleep. Now, fast forward six months later, I decided I always wanted a red Ferrari. They're not red George, it's Rosa Corso, Rosa Ferrari's Rosa. racing color. Don't call it of red. Course. The of salesman course. made it very clear that if I said red, he was not going to sell it to me. And to buy a Ferrari, you must have had a Ferrari. So I went through all those loops. They don't just sell you one. Oh, and it was, it was red, and I can smell the leather. It's that soft Italian lambskin leather. And I'm driving now with a beautiful model, supermodel, next to me to one of the fanciest restaurants in Los Angeles. It was in like West Hollywood, Beverly Hills area. And we pull up, the paparazzi come out. Who is it? Is it an actor, a football player? Oh no, it's, it's the ecstasy kid. They're taking pictures. Now, six months before, I had a shitty job at a copy shop. These, these places called Kinko's. We have to do a little bit of oh, young yeah. explaining, George, because people don't yeah, yeah. know exactly people what copy remember. shops yeah. are. But these were shops where you went to get photocopies made. And- I remember that because I didn't have a place to live and the guy knew that I didn't have a place to live, I would catch two hours of sleep on my breaks behind the copy machine because it was warm. You'd hear the buzz and the sound of the machine making the copies. That would put me to sleep for a couple hours and I'd get back and go to work on my own time. The boss, who was like this cartoon villain of a human being, I <laughs> swear to God, he Most was hard. a monopoly no. guy reincarnated with a mustache and he always smelled and he had this cane comes, catches me in the back, starts hitting me with the cane, kicks me out of the store. I never got paid for the week. Ugh. For him, it was nothing. For me, that was eating that week. I never got paid. Now, I'm in this brand new Ferrari, just like movie cliche, throw the keys to the valet. The guy catches it with a smile, says, Sir, the dream. I'll, park, I'll park it right out front. The beautiful girl gets out. 12 inch high heels, gorgeous short skirt, all that stuff to my right. Like everybody's staring at her. Everybody's staring at me. I look out the corner of my eye. Who do you think I see, George? That boss. It's the cartoon villain boss. Uh, yeah. And he does a take and he does another take and he starts turning red. I've never seen a human being turn red like that, like red, red. And I, I tell the girl, hang on a sec. I walk up. And he can't get a word out of his mouth. <laughs> can't get it. a word out of his mouth. He can't believe what he's seen. And then I mentioned my name. Remember me? It's Shaheen. <laughs> and I mentioned his name. I'm not going to say it on the show. And he starts getting increasingly more mad. And I shake my hand. And he's got all these questions, but he can't, he can't get words out. He's so furious. And I say, excuse me, I have to go. I walk back in the restaurant, girl comes on my hand, the valet smiles and points at me, Best people taking ever. pictures. <laughs> and I turn my head and I remember success leaves clues. But success is also the best revenge. Oh, success yeah. is the greatest revenge. And the feeling that I had in that moment, knowing that we had broken a billion dollars in sales, knowing that this little guy that had kicked me 
and hit me with a cane six months earlier and neglected to pay me my few hundred bucks now is witnessing me at the pinnacle of my success was the moment that I knew I arrived. Yeah, it's interesting because it goes to show that, I mean, at, at, at the same token, I've known people that have had success happen so quickly that didn't do the growth behind it. And, you know, everything just kind of fell apart. But but it really shows that things can happen. I mean, you had a pretty wild ride, pretty crazy, cr- pretty crazy story. But I think that probably because it happened so fast, that cemented for you this whole idea of arriving, but yet it seems like it really pushed you then further into that world of entrepreneurship because from there on, I mean, you just, you have just dominated things. And so what, what, what kind of pushed you the direction of e-commerce and, and, and is that your primary focus that you have right now is the e-commerce world? Yeah. 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 So Herbal XC was a whirlwind. And, and by the way, anybody that's interested in the story, the book is out now. You can get the audible book or the hardcover paperback Kindle on Amazon. So check it out. It's called Billion, How I Became King of the Throw Pill Cult. Would love it if you guys oh, left me a awesome. great review or leave we'll me a We'll put a link in the show review. notes as well. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And, and probably a, a, a crazy wild story too. So I, I'll have to kind of check that out. But yeah, wow. We, we just got a film deal for it that I'm very excited to see realized. Wow. From there, I went on to creating all the technology for digital vaporization, all the vapes, mm, all the e-cigs, right. all that stuff you see evolved from technology that I built, designed, patented. That company went public. I sold it a little bit before. And I started looking at this little guy, this little kind of like bald, nerdy guy with a funny laugh. You might have heard of him. His name was Jeff Bezos, still is Bezos, Jeff Bezos. Yeah. yeah. And Bezos had launched this platform that was kind of squeaking along. It was okay. It was losing money. And I remember thinking to myself, well, what's up with this? And back in those days, you could get Jeff Bezos on the phone. You could email him, jeff at amazon.com. He would respond. And I remember thinking, maybe there's more to this guy than meets the eye. We heard through the grapevine that Jeff was opening up the Amazon platform to third-party sellers. That means anybody like me and you could mm-hmm. sell anything virtually. Now, this was their- when? What When was this? Do you remember like kind of the This year-ish? was like 2009, 2009-ish, okay, yep. ish, around then. So I thought to myself, man, cool. Meanwhile, I had a crazy party at one of my houses in Venice, Venice Beach, California. If you guys haven't been, come visit us. And Bradley Cooper was there, the, the, the famed actor, and we were having a great time with him, a great conversation. He later went on to make that movie Limitless, Limitless. which is yeah. great. If you guys haven't seen it, go Love check it out. Flick. Yeah. And I remember thinking to myself, huh, what was the, what's the link between that? Me talking to Bradley Cooper, him making that film, me Makes being in the pill business. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to make the fucking limitless pill. That's what I'm going to do. And I was working with one of the big pharma companies at the time who hired me from time to time to do some work for them. And I came up with a pill that I thought would work really fucking well, but it was expensive. Making supplements is very expensive to make them work. Yeah. Yeah. Usually what you see in supplements, you know, when you buy them is there's a million ingredients and they do that for SEO, uh, search engine optimization, much right. more than they do for your benefit. So everybody, you're all, almost always better off buying single ingredient supplements because they can't put a bunch of random shit in there. Anyway, that's another story. So I came up with a supplement called Accelerol, another one called Focus Plus. They're still available on Amazon, but they were super expensive in that in those days. It was uh, $120 a month for your supply of this stuff. So I thought to myself, man, let me just throw this up on Amazon. It took 15 minutes to open a seller account and put it up. Bezos was brilliant at setting up the platform. Very few barriers to entry in the early days. We were one of the first sellers on there. Went to sleep, didn't think much. Woke up the next morning, looked at the sales, and I thought, man, there must be an error here. Those are thousands of orders at $120, hundreds of thousands of dollars. I said, what the fuck? And I looked at it. I was like, no, it's not a mistake. And then I looked a little bit more into this Bezos guy, and I realized this was not a chump. This was not a guy who was like this giggly Silicon Valley nerd that everybody was was looking at. This is a disruptor. Yeah, Bezos is somebody that everybody underestimated, with the exception of a few. Nobody recognizes it until it happens, but opportunity happens by recognizing it. Yeah, you absolutely did. Yeah. Yeah. And what Bezos did was he took cheap money from Wall Street put it into Silicon Valley and was going to build this platform that was going to be a game changer, a disruptor. So turn of the century, George, you got Piggly Wiggly. 
Do you know the Piggly Wiggly story? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so this guy comes comes out, and you know, turn of the century, you want to buy some stuff. You walk up to the general store. There's your guy. He says, "Cash or credit, sir?" You know, if he knows you, he might give you some credit. And you say, "I want bread, a loaf of bread. Give me a, some some sandwich meats, a soda, and some stuff." You wouldn't have a freaking freaking choice. He puts it in a bag. He hands it to you. The price is what it is, and you're done. No competition. Nothing. So Piggly Wiggly comes around. And goes, we're going to revolutionize. We're going to disrupt. What are you going to do? We're going to build these things. Whoa, what are those things? They're called aisles. We're going to have the products out there, more than one, and customers can come and pick anything they want. I said, really? Yeah. And then I'm going to revolutionize this other way. What, what the hell's that? That's a cart. It's got four wheels on it. They're going to be able to take it through the aisle and take as much stuff as they want. And then one final thing, I'm going to have that thing. What the heck's that? That's a register. Three things, simple. And it changed the way we shop forever. Yeah, people look at that. People, I mean, besides the fact half the people don't know that story, but you know, people, people see that or they'll hear that. They'll say it's a good story. But the people, what I've learned from getting and being around seven, eight, nine figure mentors and individuals I've been around is that they think differently and they see and they recognize. I know one of your strong suits has been recognizing trends and movement because the key is not jumping on a trend. The key is identifying behavior. And when you look at things like that story there, or even, you know, your discussion of Amazon in general or the internet, I think it, what's more important than the lessons of what happened is identifying the, the movements and the keys to success and the clues that are now moving at light speed, right? Now they're moving mm -hmm. at a whole different level with NFTs and crypto and Forex and things like that. So I, I love that that's how your brain works because I pointed out because I, I've found that most super successful people, that's the way they think. They're seeing, they're not seeing stories and opportunities. They're seeing trends and movement and, mm. and things like that. And I think um, that's what I think helps like my audience, for example, uh, the most is identifying ways to recognize the trends, capitalize on the trends. And, you know, obviously, you know, you went from, you went in, you went in different industries and trends in your environment, but also in general, you know, success is going to have to be dependent on what's going on in the marketplace, right? And right now, it's a freaking shit show. It's it's all over the place, right? So, yeah, what do you what do you see happening right now? What what's the keys that you see as being successful and helping people to be successful right now with everything that's changed? Yeah. So now, what I teach, um, by the way, I've got a a course where I teach people how to sell on the Amazon platform. How do you find a product? How do you speak the language of conversion on Amazon? How do you get reviews? How do you even find a product that's going to sell on there? And we teach a unique system that is primarily don't build a product and go out there and find a market for it. Instead, what you should do is look at the market for what it needs and then go in and give it what it already needs and learn to tell a better story. So we teach this in our Amazon mastery course, by the way, it's $200 for a one hour course beginning to end for anybody that's listening to daily mastermind. If you use the code daily mastermind and you email me directly, I answer all emails personally. If you email me directly, I will give that to you for free. Right no on. obligation, no credit card. You'll never hear from us if you don't want to. Um, and so I'll give out my email and we'll share it in the show notes as well is D A R K. Z E S S at gmail.com. That's dark zess at gmail.com. D A R K Z E S S at gmail.com. And if you're interested in our larger program, is FBA sellercourse.com. That's fulfillment by Amazon sellercourse.com. Reach out to us if I can help support you in any way I can. Well, and well, that's, that's, first of all, that's awesome that you did that. I didn't know we were going to be able to do that. So that's great for anyone that wants to learn. But I will point out, and one of the things that I would recognize is that. Being an early adopter in Amazon, you had to go through and not only just understand what works best, how it works best, the products, the marketing, the positioning, but you also had to adapt. And because of that, it qualifies you to be one of the best you know, mentors in that area. So that's awesome. I know that you, I, I knew that you did have a course. And so that's really great that you offer that for free. I think everybody should take advantage of that because whether you are involved directly in Amazon or not, you're going to be affected by it. And I do think that there are things that you can learn. I've already picked up from some of the things you've said, just in doing business in general, because 
the Amazon is one of those companies that really makes the market move in general, right? So understanding you hit a real key point that I talk about a lot with my background in marketing, and that is a lot of times people just get so, you know, sold on a product or things they have, and they don't dive into the market itself and the buyers and the marketplace. So I love that. I love that your course would cover that as well. Do, would you identify that as really one of the secrets to success is being able to not necessarily just position your product in someone else's mind, but understand the mind and the market to position products to? Yeah, great question. So look, what I was saying before is that we teach foundational thinking. I think that especially now in the day of shiny things and the day where you've got these TikTok influencers shining, look at my jacuzzi with the 50 million bikini girls and my Lamborghinis and everybody's chasing the shiny thing. The first rule is there is no hack to hard work. We do a show called Hack and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. I invite you guys to check us out. Uh, we're on Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, anywhere you can, you can find podcasts, subscribe to us. We talk about the hacks to success. There is no hack to hard work, first and foremost. Secondly, you have to think foundationally. You can't just have one hustle. You can't just have a career. You can't just have a job that doesn't work anymore. When you, you say foundationally, you're talking about having a core principles and, and things of ways of thinking, correct? So take a table. In general. You got a four-legged table, very strong. Three-legged table, eh, you'll probably still stand. Two legs, not good. One leg, you're in tripod territory. Okay. The first leg of your foundation has to be something that keeps diapers on your twin babies, diapers on your triplets, keeps food on the table, brings the bacon home, make sure that you are stable and have stability. If you're a trust fund kid, great, your trust fund will do that. You don't need that pillar. But for the rest of us that are not, you need to have a foundation that keeps you comfortable and keeps your life stable. Because when we are stable, our minds are clear. And when we're right. clear, we do our best thinking. And when we do our best thinking, it leads to the second pillar. The second pillar is that you should have some of your money invested in cash flow positive real estate. We talk about this. I teach this to my students as well. Something that's generating cash flow income for you. Even if you don't have any money, you can start learning about that. There's multiple ways to invest in real estate with little or no money. You can do Airbnb. There's all kinds of ways that you can do it eventually until you can start buying some real estate that's bringing cash flow. Somebody else is paying for dirt that you own. The third pillar would be having investments that gain you compound interest, stocks, bonds, like you were talking about crypto, NFT. Yeah. I don't do that, but there are people like yourself and others that are expert at that. And the fourth pillar, which arguably I think is one of the strongest ones, is e-commerce. We have reached a new era. We are still in day one, as Jeff Bezos says with Amazon. We are on the fucking ground floor of this great opportunity. People look at Jeff Bezos and they're like, oh, look, he's a trillionaire, billionaire. Look at all these things that he has. And he bought this house. Look at all the wealth this guy has. And I say, you're missing the fucking point, man. Look at all the wealth that he's created for others. Yeah. That's why he's wealthy. There and that's what some people are thinking. They're thinking, well, you got started early on. And, and uh, you know, how am I going to be able to do that now? How would you address that with somebody that says, is it too late? Is the timing not there? He caught it early. What, do you, what would you say to them? That's what I'm saying. It's day one. There's so many opportunities now. Ground floor in Amazon. Sure. If you want to go sell something, popper toys or spinner toys or some shit that people have been selling for the last five years, you missed the boat on that stuff. But people always need things. No matter how many NFTs they put out there, you still got to eat something. You still got to wash your body. People need soaps. People need cosmetics. People need all kinds of things. And Amazon being the great disruptor that it, that it is has taken the power out of these mega companies who have no clue what they're doing. They hire us, me and my agencies to help them because they have no idea what Amazon's doing. Yeah. Taking the power out of their hands and put it into the hands of people like you and me. And all you have to do, and let me teach you, I teach it on the course, darkzess at gmail.com. Email me. I'll give you the course for free. It costs little or nothing to start an Amazon company. We teach you where to incorporate. But now is the time to get involved. There's no better time 
than now to start building it. And then when you do, now you're foundational. You can never have a bad day if you've got those four pillars. Real estate's up, great. Real estate's down, no problem. You've got your Amazon business. Oh, uh, uh, slow time for Amazon. Great. You've got your, your uh, cash flowing real estate, or maybe you've got your compounding interest. And if all of those go bad, you always have whatever your security is, your, your, your career or, or your savings or whatever you have going. So you have those pillars. You never have a bad day. And that's where I want to get people to. I want to get people, that's my goal, to the point where they can comfortably walk into their job and look at their boss and say, hey, man, these are my terms. Take it or leave it. And if they say leave it, they say F off. They, they can leave. Com- yeah. Comfortably that's like, give that's the middle finger. That's everybody's like side hustle entrepreneur dream to be able to do. I, I'll tell you, I do want to highlight because I, I love that you gave those four pillars because we talk a lot about active and passive income and diversification and synergy with what yeah. you're doing, your unique talents. But I love how you said create stability investing in real estate. I'm a big, big, big believer in that. Investing in something that has compound interest in e-commerce. But I I also love that when you said e-commerce, some of you might be listening to this and might be thinking, you know, that's Amazon, e-commerce. That's a platform that I can't, ju- that I won't just learn a skill, master a skill. It's a platform that I can build my whole foundation around in all these areas, not just because of the income, but the stuff you're talking about. Because I, I think... Shahina, I, I love how you, when you talk about things, you're not just talking about a money-making opportunity. You're talking about the way you think, the foundation you need to build. And I tell you, the, those things, they, they translate to every area of your life, man. Um, I'm a big believer that whether it's personal development, professional development, financial education, they're going to extend to your job, to your business, to your opportunity, to your investments, to your wealth. And getting to think that way is huge. And And the way that's what people have to realize when you talk, when, when we have the opportunity to talk with individual like, like him, you've got to, you got to think more about how they think and why they think this way, not just what they're saying. You're missing the point if you're just listening to the detail without understanding how they do it. And so I love how you do that, man. I just, I just give you some, um, some kudos there as well, because I've been around a lot of individuals and, and uh, it's the ones that are the most successful that, that orchestrate and have, also, I can, I can tell you're, you're interested in building foundation for people, not just helping them to create an opportunity. And that's big for me and for my listeners, you know? Yeah. I mean, look, George, I'm, I'm at a place in my life where I've got a few money. I don't, as, as Scott Adams says, great. The yeah, founder Rogan, of Dilbert, right? he, yeah, he yeah. wrote a bunch of great books. I've got a few money. I've got my cars. I've got the Porsches. I've got the Ferraris. I've got the houses. I've got all that stuff. I don't need to be doing anything I don't need to be doing. I say no to more deals than deals that I say yes. And a lot of them are money makers. I just don't need to do it. And I certainly don't need to deal with assholes. So I'm in a privileged place in my life where I don't need to do that. What I do need to do is to share my story, which is why I... I wrote my book. And secondly, by the way, Billion, How I Became King of the Throw Pill Cult, if you guys want to check it out. And the, secondly, the name is, I'm sorry, the title of the book is Billion, the subtitle, How I Became King of the Throw Pill. Okay. Yeah. How I Became King of the Throw Pill Cult. And, you know, to inspire people is really my goal. Nothing makes me happier when somebody calls me and says, Shaheen, I took your course, I started an Amazon company. And now I can do whatever the fuck I want to do. I get to travel with my family. And that's the most important thing. Like for me, the most important thing is freedom, is being able to do what you want, when you want, with who you want, how you want, and not having anybody else tell you what you're doing. I I say this often. I feel that one of the biggest crimes against the working class person is this notion that you have to sell your hours for money. Right. Yeah. It's a crime, man. If you're selling your hours for money, you are doing the greatest injustice to yourself and to your family. And your first priority has to be, how do I get out of that? And there's great ways to create predictable recurring revenue. One of them is Amazon. If you come on board, I'll teach you how to do it. If not, there's lots of ways to do it. But ultimately, if you want to have freedom, if freedom is something that's important for you, you're going to need money. Yeah. Anybody absolutely. that argues with you is a broke motherfucker. Yeah. Right. The guy yeah. that said money is right the- up there with oxygen for the most part. There it is. 
I, 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 I tell this usually when I'm on stage, the guy that said money is the root of all evil was a broke ass motherfucker. <laughs> that guy didn't have any. That's yeah. why he said that money's great. Yeah. It's glorious. It's fun. And, and you need it. And in order to get it, you got to figure out a way where you're not selling your hours. We all last right. time I checked had 24 and nobody's yeah. got more. Nobody's got less. So you got to figure out a way to multiply the power of your time. And you do that by creating businesses that create positive recurring revenue. And that you, and that create leverage, right? That are yeah. not a uh, transactional business, but a scalable business. I think that's a huge, huge, huge benefit of, of e-commerce. And, you know, the two messages we try to commonly hit over and over and over on this podcast with the daily mastermind is number one, you know, it's never too late to start living the life that you were meant to live because we were meant to live success, prosperity. And also you can create your ultimate destiny and never been easier than now. It's never been easier than now to get access. I mean, just the fact that, you know, people can listen to you and get your story and all your details and things without having to know someone to know someone, it just shows the power of that. And and I'm, and I'm a big believer in that as well. That's our purpose and passion is to be able to inspire and motivate entrepreneurs. So what would you say, I, I, I want to, before we leave here, I, I, I want to do a couple of things, but I wanted to just ask you, if someone's out there listening to this and they're like, look, I got a job or I've got a business or I'm doing something I don't love and I want to I pivot, I really want to make a change. What would you recommend is the next step or what would be a key success principle? Because I didn't get into, and we probably have to do it on another show, but what your daily routine is, because your daily routine probably indicates kind of where you prioritize things. But what would you recommend to the average entrepreneur hustler right now, if they wanted to make a change, what, where should they start? If you want to make a change, once you're done watching this or listening to it, if you're listening to us on a podcast, you should take one action forward towards your goals. Be that Email me at darkzess at gmail.com, D-A-R-K-Z-E-S-S at gmail.com. Mention the daily mastermind and get the course for free or whatever. Whatever your plan is, you should take one action immediately. That does a couple of things. One of them is that it will solidify in your mind that you have a plan of action. The second thing is that it will positively reinforce that you are willing to do whatever it takes in order to achieve what you've set out to achieve. So my suggestion for you is take one positive action towards what you want to do. Now, if you're just like the average guy and you got a job and you're, you know, kind of trying to make sense of the world, but it's really become the hamster wheel. You went out there to find success. And instead you found that hamster wheel that so many of us have found themselves in. You got to do something to break out of it. Uh, be it join a mastermind, be it uh, find a mentor, be it join a group like my course, which we've got a mastermind, we've, we've got all that, but you have to do something to break the pattern. Yeah. You have to do something. It's what we call an NLP pattern interrupt. You have to do something different to get something different. So you have to start asking yourself, what is that thing? And the second thing is you need to start modeling people who have achieved the things that you want to achieve. If you're hanging out with the same five losers, and sorry about this, but yeah, you guys watching yeah. this, you know who those are. If you're hanging out with those same five losers who you are afraid to tell about, tell to your goals and dreams because they will just laugh at you and then move back to smoking their joint and drinking their beer, you need to find some new fucking friends. You yeah, you're the average of the five people you hang out with. Even if you're at a success level and you're not where you want to be, you got to level up. I, I totally agree with that. You need to find people who will inspire you. You yeah. need to find people that are looking out for you. People that will look at you and tell you, dude, you're a fucking asshole. And if you keep going at the rate that you're going, you're going to fail in a bad way. You yeah. need truthful people around you, honest people around you, but people that are also out there conspiring for your success. And yeah. there's a path to that. We teach it in the course, but uh, reach out to us. I'm happy to share that, but there's other ways to do it too. You can. No, you can, I, I, I think that's a great, like I'll, I'll real highlight. I'll really highlight one point where you said pattern interrupt. I noticed that some people have specific steps they kind of recommend to our audience, but you said something that I believe hundred percent. And that is take a step, 
take the next step. Take the next step because that is the pattern interrupt you need in your life. That's all it takes. It doesn't take a plan, a path, everything. It only starts with the next step that you need. And that is absolutely the best suggestion we could have possibly made for people today. Um, I love that. So, okay. So Shaheen, what, where can people um, follow you, get a hold of you? Because I loved your Facebook page. I mean, you're talking about creating influence and overcoming limiting beliefs, all kinds of things. Where's the best place for people to find you? And uh, as we get leaving here with the episode. Yeah. So there's actually three different places you can get a hold of me. So the first one, check out my book, Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Called, Amazon, okay. Audible, anywhere books are found. Secondly, join us on our podcast. We're up to about 65,000 subscribers, Hack and grow rich. maybe more called Hack and Grow Rich. Okay. Third, if you're interested in the Amazon course, if you're interested in breaking free reach out to me, darkzess, D-A-R-K-Z-E-S-S at gmail.com. You will get a personal response from me. And if I can coach you, mentor you, help you achieve the levels of success that you know you're capable of, reach out. And thirdly, our master course is fbasellercourse.com. That's FBA for fulfillment by Amazon. So fbasellercourse.com. Reach out to us if I can support your success. That's what it's all about. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Listen, I, I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy guy. It's actually been, uh, it's taken a long time for us to get this uh, line the planets here. So I've really enjoyed spending some time. I know we got some other things that we want to do together and whatnot. So I'll put those things, show notes uh, will be there for you guys. Make sure you follow him. Make sure that you take the next step and build a foundation. Become a seven, eight, nine figure you know, thinker, because if you can become that as a thinker, you're going to create the success. The success will follow you no matter what, and it'll reinforce all of the necessary things you need so that you can maintain and keep and grow that success. Um, so that's our message for today. Share the show, hit me up, make sure that you DM me and tag me in the story so that I can see what it is you're struggling with. What can we do to help you at the daily mastermind on Facebook or Instagram? Look forward to talking with you soon. This is George Wright, the third, we have spent some amazing time with Shaheen Shayan, and I appreciate his time today. Have a great day, guys. We'll talk with you soon. Thanks, buddy. Honored to be on.